This is Success Beyond the Score, giving insights and tips to help you learn how to build your music career from the best in the field by Millicent Stevenson. Millicent is a multi-award winning saxophonist and endorser of Harry Hartman's Fiber Reads. She is currently serving on the Executive Committee of the Musicians' Union. With over 40 years experience in the creative industry, Millicent has honed her performance and business skills. She provides personal development training and coaching via her online platform, successbeyondthescore.com. Hi, yeah. Hope you are well and you can hear me okay. Um, I'm just getting this lined up here so I can, I'm ready to share a fantastic 11th episode of my success beyond the score uh, for you today. Now, a um, couple of things to say before we get cracking about the sound engineer. One is, I did it. <laughs> I have got to 11 live shows on YouTube. And at the beginning, I didn't think I'd manage it, but I did. And I want to thank you so much for being with me and for giving me those questions and for just uh, rocking up and liking and sharing, subscribing. Thank you so much for that. And going forward, just make sure you put the bell on so you're notified of any future um, broadcasts I will be doing. Now, the second thing before I get cracking on the sound engineer topic is to remind you that if you're new here, there have been 10 other episodes before this one. And I've covered the seven stages of the gigging musician, talked about whether your music can build a fan base, whether um, how musicians get killed by not understanding sound engineering. And um, today I'm gonna to look at the other side of sound engineering. I've looked at, do you have a music hobby? Do you have a music business? Um, three reasons why you should charge for your music. And also, playing for free it's a bit of a contradiction but when do you when why should you all that kind of thing um video recording your gigs it's really important to do that i've looked at sound recording going into that studio to make your first live cd mp3 whatever and, and why you should wait the three reasons where you shouldn't do it straight away um, I've looked at the essentials for putting on your own performance, your own show where you are the headliner with your own support acts. And today I'm looking at three reasons why you should contact the sound engineer. Now, um, a third thing I need to say, I said there were two, but actually there is three. I've got a gig today and I've got to get to the sound check on time. So you will notice that I've um, taken off the chat so you can't leave any questions right now. But what I want you to do is to put them in the comments because while I'm traveling, I'll be able to check back, answer your, you and so you're, you're sorted. But I cannot handle the questions and get there on time. And uh, yesterday was a really good session that we had and we ended up talking for almost an hour and then everything keeled, but hey ho. <laughs> so um, let me get to my notes. Here we go, just looking at my notes. Okay, here we go. Let me just scroll that across. Now then, here's your question. Are there benefits for contacting the sound person? Usually it's a guy, sometimes it's a woman, but contacting the sound person who handles the microphones and amplification of sound of the gig in advance, or is it best to wait till you get there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good question, isn't it? Well, let me give you a couple of scenarios while you're thinking about that. You turn up with your instrument and your music on your phone. They have sound equipment, microphones, but they don't have the right lead to connect your phone to their desk. And you say, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I've got my tracks on CD. I've got them in USB. They're my backups. You can use any one. Which one would you like? And they say, actually, I don't have any facility to pay back CDs or USBs. <laughs> now, you're probably thinking, what, in this day and age? Trust me, there are different types of sound systems and mixing desks. If they don't have the right one, they can't do it. 
Okay, how about this scenario? You're booked for a gig. You turn up. You see there's a microphone and you're, you're cushy, you're fine. You see everyone goes up and perform and the MC talks and all that kind of stuff, compare talks, whatever you're gonna call them. Then it's your turn. You go up there, stand in front of your mic, start to perform, but you are struggling to hear yourself. And when you do hear it, it doesn't sound right. Something is mm, not quite right. Okay. That may not be you. So let's try this one. You're part of a band, even a group, a choir even. And you turn up and you say to the person, hey, um, we need two microphones. We need to plug in a keyboard and we need to plug in our bass. And they look at you and say, I've only bought a DJ system and it can only handle one microphone. And you realize, oh no, you're stuck. You need the keyboard player. You need the guitarist and the guitar didn't, the guitarist didn't bring his acoustic one. Oh my gosh, what are you going to do? <laughs> now listen, back in the day, I had some really hairy experiences turning up to gigs and not getting my CDs playing, my backing tracks playing, not getting heard properly and all this kind of thing. And I just got to a point where I just got a bit fed up and thought, you know what, something's got to change. Now, I got my head around some tech, so that wasn't too bad. But in the journey I had with making sure I can hear myself, making sure the sound person has what I need, because sometimes, you know, I have gigs where they're providing the sound because it's a massive room and my system can't do it. And uh, one of the lessons I learned the hard way was speak to the sound engineer before you get to the gig really 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 important and i know some people are risk takers and you're like oh it's fine when i get there i'll deal with it but it can go one of two ways it can work out fine and you come away thinking Phew, that's good <laughs> or it can go down and you go why 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 you know you don't want that you absolutely don't want it. You need to do everything you can do to make sure your performance is stellar, it's great. And one of those things is speaking to your sound engineer well before the gig. I don't mean on the day of the gig, you're phoning that person because they're running around loading up their van and trying to get there to set up. And I'm not saying the day before, it's a little bit too late. I'm saying a couple of weeks before you should be having that conversation. Minimum the week of the gig. You need to do that. Now then, I'm gonna give you some more concrete um, reasons why you should do that in advance. And even today, I turn up to gigs and I can point to the performers who have not bothered to check with the sound engineer. It's so easy to see. But before I do that, it's advert time. Please, if you like what you're hearing me say, like it, share it, put comments in, put questions down there, click the bell for notifications and just tell everybody about it. It's just great free information to help musicians become the best they can be. I firmly believe in that. The, the world is big enough for all of us to have a piece of the pie, I've said before, to get paid and to do a great job. And the information I'm giving are things I've learned the hard way and I don't see why you should do that. You can learn it the easy way and get there quicker than I did. <laughs> now if you're new, I've got a couple of free gifts for you for just sharing and liking and subscribing. 25 Secrets of the Successful Gigging Musician, Singer, Rapper and Spoken Word Artist is a, a download PDF that I created with 25 excellent tips that will help you to just level up straight away on your music. And also I've got another one called 10 Reasons Why They Will Pay You Before Gig Day. And you can get both of those, one of those, whichever you prefer, both, from www.successbeyondthescore.com forward slash free gifts. And the link is in the description. And also I have a store, so you might want to go over there and you might see some courses there that you're interested in for benefiting and uplifting and changing the way you do music. Okay, so let's get to the juicy bits. 
I'm going to give you one, two, three, four reasons. They always say three, don't they? Four reasons why you should contact the sound engineer in advance and some other side tips I picked up on the way. Number one, you need to check he has the right equipment. I know I said he, and I know women do, but I'm just going to say he, they, which I keep it neutral. But you need to check that they have the right equipment for your needs. You know, if you still use your backing tracks on CDs, and there's nothing wrong with that, it just depends if that's what you do, um, and because that's what the tech you can afford, that's a tech you understand, let them know you've, you're doing that because they can bring out a CD player. Because they might be the type of person who's just thinking about what they've got and they've got their things all on laptop and stuff like that. And they may not even want your CD in their laptop. They may have a different device that they want to put the CD player CD in. So you should let them know I'm coming and I am going to be performing three songs and I'm bringing my backing track on CD. And then they can get prepared. Or USB. I'm coming and I'm bringing my tracks on USB. Or I'm bringing my tracks on my iPad, on my tablet, on my laptop on my phone you just need to let them know so they can bring the right equipment for your needs um I, I may have told you this story before when i spoke uh, a couple of episodes back about uh, musicians getting killed by sound and not taking enough interest in this but i remember doing a gig where i saw people going to the sound person with their phone in their hand and one or two of them struggling because the sound person didn't have the right lead because all phones are different. You've got different um, inputs. Some phones are happy to take a 3.5 millimeter jack into the where you put your, your headphones. The more modern phones now using USB, I think it's called USB-C, the different shape. And then you've got another style and a different thing. Look, it's, they just need to know. So they bring the right ones. So, and that also means you can perform. You know, you don't have to really worry about your music being played back. So check that they have the right equipment for your needs. Um, also, let me have a look at this uh, PA systems. Let me tell you about this. Um, that's public address systems. Maybe you've not paid much attention to looking up the boxes and things that they use, but they're different sizes and different types. A DJ system is very different to a mixing desk for a sound engineer. So it's really important that you let them know so they bring the right thing. Um, number two, it makes life easier by knowing what they want so they can prepare. So they're going to get the things for the needs, but the sound engineer, he, he wants to prepare. He wants to be comfortable. You know, they just want to do the job they love and do it well. And they know that if they get their job right, you're going to sound good. You're going to be happy. They're going to be happy. The audience is going to be happy. They're going to get booked. They're going to get more work. They're not going to be told, oh my gosh, that sound was, oh my gosh. And feel really embarrassed and not, not get a booking because they messed up your sound. And it's not that they messed up your sound. It's because you didn't give them the heads up. Therefore, your sound got messed up. Not that they're doing it deliberately, but they were just working with what they have and they were just trying to make it work. So it makes life easier for them. And if they're happy, you're happy. That's one thing I found about sound guys. I always say hi. I always say hello. I always say thank you. I relate with them. I liaise with them and they will do a great job for you. So it makes it easier for them. And remember, they're the professional on sound. So make it easy for them. They love their job. Help them out. Um, the third point is this, you can carry less or more. If you're dealing with a bona fide sound engineer, he's done it, he's got the miles, got the t-shirt and everything, and he's got the right equipment. Um, it means you don't have to bring out your equipment. If he's going to bring, if he says, look, I haven't got the leads. Do you have your leads to put into your phone or your iPad or your laptop? And you say, yes, he will say, bring it. He will ask you some questions about the leads and you'll, you'll just describe it. Even. And he goes, yes, that will work in my system. So he may have his leads because he's using it for his laptop. But you bring yours and he can connect that into his system because he knows he's got space to put it in and your laptop can work. So it means you're just bringing a lead. You don't have to bring your full PA. Now, of course, if it's a sound engineer you've not worked with before, if the venue is of a size that 
um, fits the PA system you have, you can carry yours in your boot just in case there's a problem. But more than likely, if you know who you're dealing with and you work with them time and time again, you can just walk light. You don't have to think about bringing your boxes in. So you can carry less or you can carry more, but you can only decide that when you speak to them in advance, okay? And of course, if they're bringing a DJ system, you know, that's not gonna work for me. You know, you can bring yours, you, you liaise with the organizer that you're gonna arrive early and set up. So that's really, really important. And um, number four is really something you will acquire as you go along. And that is, you will be able to check out if they have the level of understanding and competence to make you sound good. You know, um, the other day I had a gig I couldn't do and I passed it on to a couple of my, my students and my students are quite good. So I was happy to let them have that work. And um, I was speaking to the sound engineer and I just got the distinct impression that well, maybe he might not be able to do what he says he can do. So I gave my girl some advice about some things that put your stuff in your boot and what have you. And it did happen that, you know, the experience they had wasn't a very pleasant one because this person, he was um, relying on some equipment to come in and that didn't come in and that impacted what the my students had to do. And of course, they're just learning about sound so they weren't able to correct certain things. The, the gig happened. Um, it is kind of a gut feeling sometimes with people. Sometimes it's just the choice of words that they use. You know, you think mm, they're making this sound bigger and better than it is. So you're just picking up on that. And then sometimes it's just trial and error. You know, you get there, you hoped it would work out. You did your due diligence. You spoke in advance. You sorted things out only to find when you get there, it didn't. And that is such a shame when that happens, you know, such, such, such a shame. So those are my four points before I go into some other tips for you. And that is, it helps you to know they've got the right equipment for your needs. It makes their life easier and they can do their job. You can carry less or more. And also you can check out the competence of that individual if you're in safe hands or, or not. And plan how you're going to plan your plan B and your plan C, you know, maybe you might decide to go a cappella if it's just not working, <laughs> just a mic and no music. Who knows? Who knows? Now then, there is another side to consider with sound engineers. But just before I say that, don't forget, grab your free gift from my website, www.successbeyondthescore.com forward slash free gifts. And it's 25 secrets of success. Oof. 25 Secrets of the Successful Gigging Musician, Singer, Rapper and Smoking Wood Artist or 10 Reasons Why They'll Pay You in Advance. Um, yeah, the other side. Also, if you're liking what you're hearing so far, please press the like button. Please share it to someone straight away. Um, they can catch this immediately or they can watch the replay. Um, subscribe for more and put the bell on so you get notified when I next upload. There is another side to um, trying to liaise with sound engineers in advance and you may not have this happen to you. Um, and if it does, you can commiserate with me, I guess, and we can plan things going forward together, but I'm gonna give you my tips. And sometimes there is no big solution. You know, you really don't know, like I said a few minutes ago, what you're gonna walk into. But I have come across some DJs and when I say DJs, they're disc jockeys. They're the people who just like to play the music and they're into music and they're, they're happy to allow you to plug into their system provided they know what you're bringing. Because a DJ system, let me just explain that. A DJ system is basically a flat, not flat, well, it is flattish thing where you can put CDs in and they just mix that one mic socket that's it or they plug their laptop in that's it it's really really simple a sound engineer is going to bring a mixing desk so he's going to have something a little bit bigger and he can plug in four mics five mics 12 mics 20 mics depends on how big that is they can plug in keyboards guitars and all that kind of thing a dj system can't do that so it's worth having a look at some of the pictures online 
or you know mixing desks for you know uh, public PA uh, PA mixing desks DJ uh, desks and just have a look at pictures you'll see they look completely different and if you're looking for more advice on that please check out my friend Vince Hyatt he's my sound engineer consultant he's absolutely fantastic has loads of experience and he's happy to take your call and his number is in the description so let me tell you the other side some DJs I just identify it's more the DJs and the sound engineers actually although there was one sound engineer I can think of may not be interested in hearing from you they just don't want to know <laughs> you know um, I was doing a gig the other day and I rang up this person and I said, hey, I'm coming. Um, I just wanted you to know this is what I'm bringing. And I can't make a sound check, but I can make a line check. Um, prior to that, I had difficulty getting through to that person. And then when I did get through them, they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't do sound checks. I just roll with it live as it goes. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> In my head, I'm like. That ain't going to work. That really isn't going to work. So he wasn't really interested in going much further in the discussion. He was driving. He said, see you on the day. So I thought, okay, I've been shut down. Okay, what am I going to do? Well, yours truly packed her sound system in her boot. Um, it was a quite a big haul. So my system would just about do it. But I thought, okay, uh, I'm going to struggle with my sound system on this one. So I went there got there um spoke to him he was just about to get his meal okay come back later he said great so he's fobbing me off mm, okay um <clears throat> i went and got something to eat came back i kept an eye on him from my table see what he was doing someone else went up to perform i could see he was mixing them the sound wasn't too bad i said oh, okay he kind of knows what he's doing i went there what i did is i went ahead of my time i always do i just set up on the side I plugged all my, my mic and things together, got it all set up. Then I went over to him and said, I need to plug this in. Got that plugged in. And I said to him, I need to check the sacks over your your thing. So um, when this person's finished, can you just play a track and I'll play over? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. I've just got to mix this person first. You know, and he was like, busy trying to do it. Okay, fine, good. So that person finished their performance. Um, then I went to him. And I tell you what, it's a good thing I had said to him, I need to, and it was a him, it was a guy. Um, not to say that guys don't know what to do, I'm just saying in terms of this gender thing, it was a guy. And I went over, he played his track, I switched up my mic, and one piece of howling, and I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? And I just switched my mic off quick, and I'm like, yeah. If you give the fade is too high mate your gain's too high and you know we started to talk and get it down get it down then he got it down to a level and made some adjustment at my end as well we got it down then i just busked over his track and i go yeah, yeah that can work and then i said right just check can you hear mine so then i press play on my ipad and then he could hear it and i said right we're good to go so that was like a live a live mix in a live situation a live sound check and I'm glad I did that because it, anyhow I had followed him I said okay yeah sure we'll do it and plug 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 on the whole audience would be like deafened and it wouldn't look good on him wouldn't look good on me although I'd make sure I give him the look so it looks like he made the mistake and not me because I did call him <laughs> well that was one you know they may not be interested in hearing from you at different stages but you gotta stick to your guns stick to your guns and get it sorted <laughs> And I'm glad I did because then I could go and perform and not worry about what's happening and looking back at him and stuff, you know. So. Um, there was another guy as well who I didn't hear from. I was ringing this person, got his number. Ringing, ringing, nothing, nothing. Nothing at all. Now, it was a jam session, so I wasn't too worried about it. So I thought it's a jam session, I, you know, fine. And I got there on time to set up a set of organize. Just let him know I'm going to be there at such and such a time, which is like an hour before. I rocked up, he weren't there. People are turning up, oh, they say, he weren't there. About 15 minutes before, he was turning up and plugging in. 
I'm like, what's going on? He was so grumpy. He was one of the most grumpiest sound engineers I've ever worked with. He knew his onions because once he plugged, he knew what he was doing. But something must have just ticked him off. Um, I don't know. I don't know the drama behind the drama. But these things happen, you know, and you just don't know when they're going to happen. You just have to deal with them and roll with it when it does happen. The other type of person you might meet, not just that they're not interested in you, is that they haven't got a clue what they're doing. And I've met kind of people like that. So when you improve in your knowledge and you understand what you're doing, you'll be able to spot these people. But when you don't really know, you just assume that you take what they say when they said, oh no, what you got doesn't work or they just blame you. You know, you, you find that they're just blaming you, blaming you, but you really like, mm -mm. it's not that my stuff's wrong. You don't know what you're doing. And I've met people like that. I have done gigs and they're like trying to tell me where to tell me about my equipment. And I'm like, no, no, it's such and such and such and such. And then they realize I know what I'm talking about. And I've got to admit, it tends to be those men who think women don't have a place in sound <laughs> that I get that kind of pushback from. But I have just continued to learn and learn and learn and learn. So I do not get pushed back at all. So, yes, you'll get some people who don't have a clue. You'll get some people who don't return your calls. I remember another occasion, someone who didn't return my call. And when I turned up, I decided to bring my equipment in because I knew it would do the room and I just set up. And I realized that that person was just very shy and they they didn't really understand. They understand their equipment and that's what they knew and that's all they were interested in. So different types of people. The third thing you might come across is if you are performing for a large organization like a university oh, just my picture just went there I oh, hope everything's okay um like a, a university and um i've done that whereby the organizer has an events team with the uni or or with the festival and they ask you to send your tech details to them and then that gets passed down to the sound engineer and I have found sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the events team forget to pass my details on. So when I turn up for my sound check, they're like, uh, who are you? And I'm saying, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, I sent some stuff ahead and said, we didn't get it. I said, oh, never mind. Let's try and figure it out. You know, because sometimes it happens. Best will in the world. You are working in advance. The sound engineer is geared up. He wants to work in advance. But the person, the middle person does not do their job. So it's just to let you know about, you know, those kind of things that happen. Thankfully, I have met many, many, many great, fantastic sound engineers who know what they're doing. They're on time. They're there for the sound check. They make me sound good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm delighted. And I tell them they are fantastic. So I just wanted to share that with you. Please put your questions and your comments in the comments box. I've disabled the chat because I've got to shoot off to this gig and I've just got to get to my sound check. But later on when I've done my sound check, I'll be checking on my phone and I'll be replying back to you. Don't forget to grab your free gift if this is the first time you're here from my website www.successbeyondthescore.com forward slash free gifts which are 25 secrets of a successful gigging musician, singer, rapper, and spoken word artist, or 10 reasons why they'll pay you before gig day. And you can grab both or one. Um, if there's any other topics you'd love to me to um, do a session on, please let me know. Um, you can put that in the comments box. You can go over to my website, successbeyondthescore.com. And there's a contacts box just Click that and send me an email through that. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, when you grab your free gifts, um, you'll be put onto my mailing list and I'll be putting out some more free content. I tend to sort of send out emails with some stuff I'm learning about in music, maybe some opportunities that I've come across, things like that. Um, so let's keep in contact as I help you to be the best musician you want to be. And um, Check out Vince Hyatt, his number's in the description if you want more information on mics and stuff. Um, I've done a webinar with Vince before about uh, microphones and PA systems and stuff like that. So you, if that's something you would love, please put that in the comments or on my contacts on my website and I'll arrange a date to do a webinar for you. 
Thank you again for listening. Thank you for being here for my 11 sessions on YouTube. I've loved it. I've enjoyed it. I've learned a lot about tech and <laughs> things that didn't work and worked, as you know, if you've been with me throughout, but it's been great. Um, it means a lot that you are sharing and you're liking and you're subscribing. I plan to do some more lives, so keep in touch. And also, while you're waiting, put your feet up with a nice drink and just go through the other 10 episodes or even this one again. I'm putting links with the titles in the description. It's kind of a long description today, but it's like the catch all. So let me tell you the 11 topics. The seven stages of the gigging musician. That's number one. Episode two. Does your music have the juice to pull a crowd? It's all about fan base. Uh, number three. Why do musicians get killed by sound? And I'm just looking at why we don't get our head around tech, you know. Number four. I'm a musician. Do I need a business plan? Trust me. Check that one out. It's really helpful for you to nav help you to navigate your career. Number five. Uh, three reasons why you should charge for your music starting today. I'm a big believer in musicians getting paid as many, many, many times as you can for every gig you do. Um, there are maybe 2%, 3% reasons why you don't, which I pick up in episode six. Is it a contradiction to play for free? So is playing for free a contradiction for musicians? Uh, episode seven. See, I've run out of fingers now. <laughs> episode seven. Do you have a music hobby or music business? There is a vast difference between the two and this will help you to grow. Check that one out. Episode eight. This is why you should video record your gigs and I'll give you some reasons why you should do it and some in-depth things about that. So check that out. Number nine. Da -da -da. Stop. Do not record until you've done this. And that is don't go into a recording studio until you've done this. Please, 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 please. I'll give you some reasons of things you should do, not do before you get there. So it's it, you have a good time and you can sell your CDs. Um, number 10, three essentials for putting on your show. When you want to do your own show, um, you're the headliner, you want to bring in some support acts. I give you some essential things you should do so your show is successful. And finally, number 11, 10 plus one, three reasons why you should contact the sound engineer before your gig. That's the one I've just done. Um, the link's there. Please, thank you. I've enjoyed working with you. Don't forget to leave your comments. I'll check them later today, uh, just after my sound check and, and maybe after the gig. Like, subscribe, share, notification bell, and successbeyondthescore.com forward slash free gifts or the store. Lots of stuff for you to do. My gosh, lots of things for you to do, but just take your time and work through them. I'm still here. Okay, bye for now. And I'm just going to click my buttons and get my music working.